Number 45, letter A. Calculate the buoyant force on a two liter helium balloon. All right, um, so let's say here's the balloon. The volume inside of this balloon is gonna be two liters, okay? Two liters. So in order for helium to occupy this particular space, it has to push out air, right? Ambient air. So what that means is that, you know, the basic idea behind buoyant force, we can label it this, F sub B, buoyant force, is simply going to be equal to the weight of the fluid, weight of the fluid displaced. So in terms of your balloon here, in order to fill up the balloon here with helium, you had to displace, right? Meaning get rid of all of the ambient air within that balloon, okay? Or, and you can also think about it as just surrounding, right? If this balloon were in here, uh, this region in space would be uh, surrounded by just ambient air. Now this region in space is being filled up by helium, so helium is displacing this volume of ambient air. Okay, so um, so to calculate the buoyant force here, we need to know the weight of the fluid displaced. So in this problem, you first have to understand what is the fluid being displaced. And as we described, it's going to be the ambient air. Okay, so it's the weight of the ambient air. So I'll just say the weight of the air that's displaced. Okay, uh, so how do we, what do we know about the uh, weight of the air? Well, um, we know that weight, so F sub B, uh, we know that weight is equal to the mass times gravity, right? So the mass of the air multiplied by gravity. So now I need to figure out what's the mass of the air that this helium balloon had to displace. So I don't really, you know, all I know is a volume. And you sh also might have to memorize, I don't know, but you should know the density of air, okay? And this is per milliliter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve this equation for mass, Okay, if I solve that for mass, we simply realize that mass is equal to density times volume. So what I can do is I can take this piece and then plug it on in for mass here, okay? Because they're equal. So let's do that. So we have the force, the buoyant force, will be equal to the um, uh, density of the air multiplied by the volume of the air displaced multiplied then by gravity. So do we know the density of air? Yes, it's just you look that up as a table of given values or you have to memorize it. Do we know the volume of air that was displaced? Yes, it's actually equal to, remember, the, the volume of air displaced is equal to the volume of the balloon here. Why? Well, the balloon you can think of as completely submerged in ambient air, right? What's around the balloon? All ambient air. So the volume of the air that was displaced is exactly equal to the volume of the balloon. All right, so I can say that the volume of air displaced is equal to the volume of the balloon. If I could spell balloon, right? There you go. So uh, now all we have to do is just plug in the values because we know. So the buoyant force here is going to be equal to the density of the air. So this is 1.29 times 10 to the minus three. And this is now in terms, uh, well, this is now going to, let me think about this for a second. So just the only thing is the units here, right? So we just have to be careful. Um, since we're using gravity, we're gonna have to use standard units. So one second. So th this is a grams per milliliter. Remember, you can take this value and multiply it by 1000 in order to find the kilogram per cubic meter. So that's the thing I'm gonna use here, okay? So I'm going to use the one. So if this is 1.29 times 10 to the three, multiplying that by 1000, it would just be 1.29, right? So, and I'll write the units here. This is gonna be kilogram per cubic meter. So now the volume here, I can't plug in two liters. No good, I have to have it now in meters cubed. All right, so all we gotta do is do a conversion. So let's do that at the top. So we have two liters. Let's first convert that into milliliters. So liters on the bottom, milliliters on the top. A thousand milliliters for every liter, bye bye liter. Why do we do that? Well, we do that so we can relate the milliliter to the cubic centimeter because it's an exact one to one ratio. So now I get it in terms of uh, a three length measurement so I can get from centimeter to meter. That's why I do it, right? So bye bye to the milliliter. And then finally, centimeter on the bottom, meter on the top, 100 centimeters in a meter. But remember that you have to cube this because you got to cancel three centimeters up here with three centimeters down here. All right. So that'll cancel that and voila, we'll have our answer. So why don't we just calculate it quickly? 
So we'll have 2 multiplied by 1,000 divided by now 100, divided now by 100 uh, cubed. So we have 0 0.002, okay, 0 0.002, and this is now in terms of cubic meters. Okay, so this is the value now you will plug in, okay? You can probably also just remember a quick conversion also, but I like to show the workout here. So we're going to plug in the value then of 0 0.002. Again, that's in cubic meters. And then all I have to do now is plug in my normal gravity, so 9.8, and let's see what we get. So we get 1.29 times 0 0.002 times 9.8. And here the buoyant force now on the balloon uh, will be equal to, I'll leave it in terms of decimal, 0 0.0253. 0 0.0253. And that's in terms of Newtons, okay? That will be the buoyant force on the balloon. So now, letter B, it says, given the mass of the rubber in the balloon is 1.5 grams, what is the net vertical force on the balloon if it is let go? All right? So, um, okay. So let's draw, so this is letter A. Let's draw for letter B. Let's just draw a free body diagram, okay? So first thing is, we have the, and this, the origin here will represent, you know, the center of the balloon, let's just say, okay? So first thing is we have a buoyant force. Buoyant force will be pointing up, okay? It always points up. So um, here, I mean, well, in this problem, the buoyant force is up. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always have to. It depends on the nature of the question, but almost always it should be. So the buoyant force here, I'll label this F sub B. We do have a value for it, Okay. Now, the balloon also has a certain weight to it, right? It has a certain weight. Now, we didn't calculate the weight, uh, but we, we will need to. So what's so the weight of the balloon now is going to be pointing down, right? We can call this the, you know, the force due to gravity of the balloon if you wanted. We could also just call it simply the weight of the balloon. Now, realize that there's basically two components now in Part B. The weight of the balloon is going to be equal to, right, the weight of helium because that's what fills the balloon. So this will equal the weight of helium plus then now the weight of the rubber. Okay, so the weight of the weight of the rubber. Okay, so basically in order to find the net vertical force, I realize that these are the only two forces acting on the object. So to find the net, all I got to do is take this and subtract this from it, right? That's the whole point of, you know, net forces. So we realize that the net force is simply going to be the buoyant force minus then the weight of the balloon, so we can just say minus the weight of the helium, minus then the weight of the rubber, okay? So how do we then, the toughest part about this is going to be how do we find the weight of helium? Well, you know the volume of helium, okay? And we know the density of helium that's just gotten from the table. So we can then find the mass of helium by using the equation up here on the right-hand side. All right, so let me detail that at the top. So the density of helium will equal the mass of helium divided by the volume of helium. Just make sure you got similar units. So I'm going to use grams per milliliter for the for the uh, uh, density. So this is uh, 0.18 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, that will equal then the mass of helium, which will help me get to the weight, right? Mass of helium divided by then the volume of helium. What's the volume of helium? Well, it's the two liters, right? That's how much that's how much volume you have of helium. But remember that the density here is in terms of milliliters. So just simply convert this into uh, milliliters here. So just it's going to be two thousand, right? Two liters. What you would do is just take that, and multiply it by one thousand. All right. So hopefully that's cool. So now we can find then the mass of helium, right? So we know that the mass of helium is just simply going to be this multiplication, right? basically between the density and the volume, okay? So what I'm going to do here in terms of my formula, let me just plug in the uh, the units, uh, not the units, excuse me, the variables. So the weight of helium is the mass of helium, right? Mass of helium times gravity, then minus, let me just move this equation down just a touch, minus then, whoops, minus then the mass of the rubber times gravity. Remember, the masses also, they all have to be in terms of kilograms, okay? 
So let's find this. Remember, this mass up here for helium is going to be in terms of grams because that's the density I'm using. So 0.18 times 10 to the minus 3 times 2,000. We're going to get a value of about 0 0.36. So 0 0.36 grams. But you need it in terms of kilograms. So move that decimal three places to the left. So that would be 0 0.00036 kilograms now. Okay, this is the mass of helium. And now, uh, the mass of the rubber, okay, we were given the mass in grams, so we just have to convert that, all right? So I'm just going to start plugging in the values now. So we realize that the net force would simply be the buoyant force, which we calculated already, um, which was about 0 0.0253. I'm probably going to use the more exact value when I actually plug it into my calculator. And then uh, minus now the mass of helium, which we found to be 0 0.0036. Let me just get rid of these densities now. We really don't need them. Then multiplied by gravity of 9.8. And then minus now the mass of the rubber. And the rubber was 1.5 grams. So converting that into kilograms, it should be 0 0.0015 kilograms. Then multiply that by 9.8. And here we go. We now have a formula. Not a formula. We now have an answer for the net force. So let me just go back into the... Yeah, there's the exact answer. So it's 0 0.025284. All right, you should have that anyway if you're doing the calculations. So we're going to take that value, subtract it now by 0 0.00036 times 9.8, then subtract it by 0 0.0015 times 9.8. And here we now get a net force of, and I'll put this in scientific, this is going to be seven, oops, this is going to be 7.06 or so, 7.06 .06 times 10 to the minus 3, times 10 to the minus 3, and that's in terms of Newtons. Okay, and did the answer come out to be positive or negative? Well, according to the values, right, it came out to be positive. And what does that tell you? Okay, what does that tell you? If this answer is positive, what does that tell you in terms of the net vector? Where is it pointing? The net vector is pointing upward, right? And if the net vector, if the net force vector, okay, is pointing upward, is the balloon going to float away? Or is it going to come back down to Earth? It's going to float away. All right. So that takes care of this, guys. Hopefully this all makes sense. Appreciate your viewership very much. I hope we are able to help you. And uh, if we are, help us out by subscribing. We'll see you next time. Take care.